the Lady in Black is a haunting figure that takes many forms in Harry Angel's investigation into the disappearance of Johnny Favorite. Angel sees her in different cities, in different churches and missions, outside and inside his head. But who is she? What does she symbolize? Who is under the veil? The answers are in the film and in the script too. There are metaphors, what we are led to believe, explicit tells, what we are told to believe, and fan fiction, what we want to believe. In this video, I'll mix all three and discuss the appearance of this mysterious and ghostly figure and share a little said theory of who is the Lady in Black. Angel Heart was released in 1987, written and directed by Alan Parker, and based on the novel Falling Angel by William Schwartzberg. The first appearance of the Lady in Black comes in the first act, inside the Kingdom mission. Grabbing Harry Angel's attention, a blood-splattered wall is tended to by who we may first think is a fellow parishioner. After all, like many of the other ladies in the mission, she's dressed in black and wears a hat. However, her outfit is distinctive, her face purposely hidden, her style of hat much different, and seems to be wearing a shroud. With a lone chair to her left, she holds a brush in her right hand. Her left hand is hidden. On the floor is a porcelain bowl filled with blood and water. Streaks of blood run down the wall. The lady in black kneels in front of a metaphoric mirror. The script simply describes the lady as a woman. No description of her wardrobe or hint who she may be. Do we see her through the eyes of Angel? Does Winesap see a different woman? In between visits to Dr. Fowler, Angel walks past the Salvation Church, described as dilapidated. He hears voices and heavy heartbeats. He steps inside the church where two missionaries sit patiently and wait. Harry sees a vision of a lone chair, a blood-filled porcelain bowl, and an elevator gate opening. The bowl and the lone unseated chair make their significance. The second appearance of the Lady in Black comes when Angel visits the Harlem mission a second time. It is not explicitly explained why he returns. It's a long way uptown. But the room with the red window draws him near. The evidence of blood wiped clean, leaving behind only a sterile bowl and its brush left on the floor. Angel climbs down to the floor of the pulpit. He sees and approaches the lady, but this time takes a seat facing a stage, a raised platform. The woman draws Harry in, just as the room had. He's afraid, but curious. Something inside of him wants to see her face. Just as he put his hand on her shoulder, he is attacked by two heavies. The lady in black stays seated. She is only seen in one other cut, oblivious of the scuffle behind her. Was this a haunting? Her next appearance comes with a flashback when Connie shared her newspaper's research into Johnny Favorite. Harry's mind drifts and experiences visions of a lady in black climbing a spiral staircase, carrying a clean white bowl with a brush inside. The stairwell looks illogical, twisting infinitely. The short scene cuts to the lady's shoes, and she takes a seat into a chair, sitting patiently and waiting. After Angel visits Toot Sweet in his home, where he stuffs his phone number into his mouth, Harry drifts into a dream, another vision. His shirt is soaked in blood. That too may be part of a dream, or very real. The dream begins with an opening of a mysterious elevator gate, and Harry stumbles into an ambiguous room. To get there, he had taken the stairs upwards. Very curious. If he was wanting to leave Toot Sweet behind, he would have made his way down. The room he comes across is large, resembling a makeshift church, complete with pews and a stage. There, the lady in black sits alone in the front bench, staring at a chair on a raised platform. 
As the elevator descends with Adam, Harry steps closer to the woman, but is distracted by a bloodied razor on the floor. His hand bleeds. His shirt is soaked in blood. There is another close shot of the lady, unmoved, uncaring, undisturbed. Angel steps closer, almost hesitant to touch her, but finally does. He is awakened by the police, and his vision ends. The oyster bar is where Harry wanted to contact Margaret Cruzmark a second time. In the phone booth, he has visions, perhaps memories, of New Year's Eve of 1943, and sees a red window, and a soldier being approached with a hand coming to rest on his shoulders. An angel seen with Epiphany during the indoor rainfall, Angel has visions of hell. As red rain falls, it fills the porcelain bowls in the room. Visions of the lady in black sitting patiently in her chair continue. We see the heels of her boots. This is followed by what appears to be a man wearing wingtips stepping into the hallway. He is followed by two others. We see someone in high heels escorted closely by another in men's shoes. We cut to the woman in black, wiping the blood-stained walls by candlelight, next to a chair with a clean white bowl resting on it. The candles rest on a sacrificial table next to a fan, the fan inside the hotel room. What we see when Harry was in the room with Epiphany is explained by Ethan Cruzmark, that Johnny and Toot Sweet picked up a young man at Times Square, where in Johnny's hotel room, a ceremony was held where Margaret handed Johnny the sacrificial dagger. Johnny, Margaret, Tootsweet, and one other make up the group of four. But the scene adds a few extra frames to the one where the lady in black is seated in the hallway. After the three walk out, the lady in black walks into the room to clean up the mess, to clean up the sacrifice. We then see one extra flashback where a group of three descend the spiral staircase, leaving the fourth behind. We see Johnny Favorite as the dark-haired man, arm in arm with a blonde woman in heels who is Margaret Cruzmark. The other man is Toot Sweet. How do we know this? By the lump he carries down the stairs. In earlier scenes, set in 1955, we see Toots walk with a definite limp in his gait. The figure in black makes one last appearance when Harry Angel retreats from Margaret's apartment and his conversation with Louis Cipher, a.k.a. the devil. He makes his way back to the room by a balcony where the figure in black sits in a chair carrying a white bowl collecting rainwater. When Angel approaches her, he steps to the left, acknowledging the figure is not imaginary, at least not in his mind. But when he passes the figure, the veil disappears. Before we reveal the face of the lady in black and give other theories, like, share, or subscribe if you enjoy this content and want to see more like this one. First, we go over who was real and who was imaginary. The woman sitting alone in the pulpit of the Kingdom Mission? She's imaginary. A specter. A ghost. The woman sitting alone in the pews in Toot's sweet apartment building? Theory 1. It's a dream because Harry Angel was going the wrong direction. His dream put together set pieces pulled from his recent memories, including the raised chair. The second theory is he wandered into the room when he was still under the devil's trance. The room is real, resembling the inner sanctum of the kingdom mission. But the woman is another specter, a ghost. But a ghost of who? Then we come to the woman cleaning the wall inside the kingdom mission. She is real. Theory number one, there is nothing supernatural. Angel and Winesap see the woman dressed as we see her. Like the other parishioners, she's dressed in black during sermon day, but chose a wardrobe too close to home for Harry Angel. In other words, it's just a coincidence. The second theory, while Winesap may see the woman dressed more akin to the others, Angel sees her dressed like the one who cleaned up the bloodied wall at Favorite's hotel room 12 years earlier. It's a waking hallucination 
and the first clue of blending memories from present day reality. The third theory, there is nothing supernatural, but her dress is not coincidental. It is revealed later that Pastor John is a practitioner of the occult. This is made more explicit in the script. Could it be like Johnny Favorite has his most devoted follower, his minion? We are never told the details of the death. Was it self-served? Or was it a human sacrifice to continue Pastor John's business successes? The theory of minions surfaces in who was cleaning the wall in Favorite's hotel room after the sacrificial ritual. The script does not mention the flashbacks in such detail as the film. Only Ethan Cruzmark's narration, which was almost verbatim, played in inferred chronological order. The lady in black climbs the stair with a clean empty bowl and brush. She sits and waits patiently in the hall. A splatter of blood. Johnny Favorite, Margaret, and Toot Sweet walk out. The lady in black steps inside the room. The three conspirators exit by descending the winding staircase. The lady in black cleans up the mess left behind. Next to a sacrificial table, a raised platform where incantations, prayers were spoken. Who are the suspects who could have been the lady in black? It was never explained how Ethan Cruzmark was able to describe the ritual in such detail. Maybe it was him waiting outside. No, that would be ridiculous and unbecoming of a southern gentleman. Maybe the man descending the staircase was Ethan Cruzmark, and it was Toot Sweet dressed in black. No, that would be ridiculous and unbecoming of a jazz musician. The figure in black didn't walk in a limp anyway. We come back to the anonymous minion of Johnny Favorite. What a terrible job to be given to clean up a murder scene, not to mention the body. But I have another more provoking theory. There is one other associate of Favorite who hung out with him in 1943 New York. That would be Evangeline Proudfoot, dressed in disguise, hiding from the prying eyes of Margaret Cruzmark. In other words, Epiphany, she quotes her mother, describing Favorite as the closest to evil as she would ever want to be. I think sticking around a human sacrifice qualifies that. Evangeline is also at least an acquaintance of Tootsuit, as both practice their brand of voodoo, or obia. After Favorite called off his engagement with Margaret, he sent Evangeline south to New Orleans, but never returned after the war. Evangeline waited and Evangeline died. The clue here is she waits patiently. Like the lady in black in front of the pulpit in the Kingdom Mission, like the lady in black in front of the stage in or near Toot Sweet's apartment building, the specter that Angel saw was his lost love, Evangeline. Now we come to the final reveal, the face of the lady or the figure in black, from shrouded to bare face. We see a clean-shaven man, played by actor Robert De Niro. But who is the character? Many will jump to think that this is Louis Cipher, the devil, with his beard shaven. But I will share my theory that's more controversial and maybe not heard in many places or anywhere. This is the ghost of Harry Angel. This is the face of Louis Cipher, who have taken the appearance of Harry Angel, but with a beard. This is why Cypher says, Funny, I have a feeling I've met you before. Like his name is a pun. Harry Angel meets Lucifer, as did Johnny Favorite. More clues come when Ethan Cruzmark tries to answer who was the soldier. Favorite and Toot Sweet picked up in Times Square. We see a young man turn to the camera. Before we see his face, We cut to Louis Cipher shaking hands with Harry Angel Imposter. Note, we don't see Mickey Rourke's face. Both of these cuts represent an introduction, a meeting of hand to body. Johnny Liebling meets Harry Angel. Johnny Liebling meets the bearded likeness of Harry Angel. Lucifer shows he has the ability to be at different places almost instantaneously. It's played in a literal manner as he shows up in New Orleans for a speaking engagement in Baton Rouge. 
But does he possess the power to change shapes? Cypher offers the imposter angel to take the form in cloven hooves and a pointed tail. If you're asking, why couldn't the man in black be the devil without the beard? Because Lucifer was in Angel's hotel room in the shape of Epiphany's young son. The big tail or the glowing eyes, the accusatory pointed finger. The Lucifer boy shape is who killed Epiphany after Cypher had taken Angel's gun and dog tags. The soldier had waited for his soul to return to him since New Year's Eve, 1943. Let me know in the comments below, what are your theories about the Lady in Black? This is Mr. G of Synergy saying, If two jazz musicians walk up to you on New Year's Eve, just walk away. Check out other videos on my channel. Thanks for watching.